thing to say. Okay, Jason, let's go ahead and look at REZ 2015-19, Fred and Martha McGill. Yes, sir. Um, this is a rehearing of a request that you saw earlier in the year. With that, um, you can see that um, ultimately what they are asking for is to reduce the boundaries of what was approved earlier in the year by <coughs> seven acres. You can see those boundaries that are denoted here on the zoning map. And they're also asking for some additional capability on their site plan to subdivide smaller build, smaller lots around those proposed buildings. To me, at the end of the day, what is being asked for is a change in the boundaries of the zoning and some modifications to the site plan or an update to the site plan. Um, you did have an updated document, which was a new cover sheet, which we really tried to clarify what was going on with the case. That was included within your materials this evening and sent out by email before Thanksgiving as well as a form that showed you um, from the engineer the very specific changes between the original plan and the proposed plan, also sent out to you by email and available in a physical copy um, tonight. So we really tried to go through and, and be very meticulous and detailed about what was changing. Ultimately, staff did get the site plan to a point where we did feel like we would recommend for its approval, and that's where we are tonight. Is we're recommending for the zoning boundaries to be reduced and for the approval of the new site plan that you have in your packets. Okay, any questions for staff, Commissioner? Any questions from staff on Mr. Quest? Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward this time. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward. If you will, please state your name and your address for the record, please. Hello, I'm Martha McGill. I live on the property at 4872 Central Crossing, and I'm Fred McGill, 4872 Central Crossing, and I'm The reason we're asking for this um, very specific change is as we've gone with our project, we have um, met with um, the local banks, the area banks, and understand it's a very expensive project, at around $10 million project. And in order to secure the financing, we need to be able to divide the property in a way that um, each bank that's participating can secure their portion um, of the collateral, if you will. In other words, if you're if you're lending the money to build the first two clinical buildings, then, then you need to be able to secure that portion of the property and so forth. So I want to speak a little bit about how we got here. <coughs> when we purchased the property, uh, 72 acres, um, as I'm sure everyone up here knows, uh, about 24 acres of it had already been rezoned to our team. After we purchased the property, we uh, subsequently rezoned that same R10 to the PDR that we have now. Uh, when, when we purchased the property, we didn't really have time to make these changes as we had to do now. Uh, after having examined everything the way, the way it is, we decided to change the way our personal property looks inside of the property. So, one of the things that's confusing to a lot of the uh, bankers is that when we purchase this property, we purchase both the project property and our personal residence. And when you go to looking at how much of the purchase price should be allocated to the project and the purchase price should be allocated to the personal residence, how much money you have invested in, in, the, in the entire property should be allocated to each uh, <coughs> To me, it just made sense for us to just pull our personal property out of the project, which is why we uh, subdivided the property to do that. Uh, when we subdivided the property, uh, the lines uh, didn't really run parallel to the way it was rezoned. So, frankly, we, we didn't really need the other seven acres that had been rezoned to uh, plan development. Uh, so, we're just asking that we just reincorporate it back into the R1. Um, in an effort to provide us with some more financing options, uh, 
we decided to try to break things down into a few smaller increments by breaking some of the lots down within the project itself. And so that's that's how we got where we are now. And so uh, it's really more of a natural strategy than anything else. Commissioners, any questions for presenters? Commissioner Mayor? So the lots one and two now represent the revised boundary. Is that correct? And what you have to do, if you have to create a separate building lot for each building so you can finance each building or two buildings for the separate, is that what you were doing? Well, I think the way the, uh, everything is laid out here, the lot one and two, lot one is the is the assisted living project itself with the six buildings would be housed. Uh, the other nine acres, which is, I think, being considered lot two, is the other nine acres that surround it, which we don't really have any uh, immediate uh, interest in doing other work. Um, and that but, would be your open space? Yes. But what the question I'm what I'm referring to is on the site plan, there is a dotted line shown around each building footprint. Right, right. And it says um, five foot separation, property line, five foot around the building. Right. So, so is that, are you treating each building as its own, its own lot within the big lot? Well, we're doing it on an as needed basis right now. What we're doing is uh, we're taking the, uh, the 8.4 acres that the six buildings are on. And uh, based on the, um, uh, the financing interest that we have time we're looking at our options in terms of trying to um, more or less separate each building on its own property. Uh, one of the banks uh, is a the banking regulations being changed. But there's a lot of new rules so that I mean, I've, I've learned a lot about it for the last few months. A lot of banks don't like participate uh, in, in their own property. Um, so that's really how we got here. Any other questions for presenters? Thank you. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this request? Anyone here wishing to speak in opposition of this request, please come forward. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition, please come forward. If there be none, Commissioners, do we need to have any discussion amongst ourselves on this request? I just mentioned, I think the commissioner had a, a question about setback. Did you ever get an answer to that? But it's, everything is still the same. Okay. The setbacks are still state constant. Yes, sir. We had, um, I'd asked the engineer to verify that, and I thought it was, I thought they were actually 60 feet from the outside of the right of way is what they were verified at for the setbacks. Yes, sir. 60. It was outside of the buildings were actually 60 feet outside the right of way. Which is farther than we thought, but that's a good that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Any more discussion? If there be none, then I will uh, ask for a motion on request. I make a motion to recommend approval of this application as presented. We have a motion from Commissioner Gladwell to approve this. We have a second from Commissioner Hall. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous at this time, 480. I just want to make sure you know that Commissioner McClendon had to step out. Okay, good deal. Alrighty, thank you very much. Basically, 